first thing, after six years of, of doing good stuff and creating dependency and giving things away, thank you, you don't give things away anymore, that just doesn't make any sense. We said, how do we impact the economy so that people can continue to do stuff after we leave? And what we analyzed, we said, well, here's a weaving co-op of women that have seals, they have looms, they, there's a demand, there's a raw material, and they're not doing anything, they were sitting on their hands, why? Because they didn't have any capital. So we started with the Bangladesh model of the Grameen Bank, we started a microloan program in Nicaragua. And we made one loan for $500 to these people, and in 18 years we made 150,000 loans worth uh, $100 million. But that's nothing compared to the important innovations I'm going to share with you. Five innovations. The first one is a self-help program. It's called Sos Produ People. And colonialism is a disease. And the disease says, you've got resources in your country, the first world says to the third world country, you have resources and we want them. And we're going to pay you the minimum possible. And if you don't want to give them, we're going to invade your country and we're going to take them. And if you resist, we're going to kill you. And, and we're going to destroy the environment as a side effect. That's not been necessarily the intention. So we have gone in and said, goodness gracious people, thanks to this revolution, you have some land. Oh, I'm supposed to be timing myself again. Oh man, come on. Uh, you have some land, but you, you're, you're not using it well, or, or maybe you are using it well. How, what's your dream? What's your vision? And uh, we are our, our agronomist team, an agroecology trained agronomy team, goes in and sits with each family and says, uh, let's draw a map of the land that you own, and let's identify the resources that are on there and what you're producing right now. What's your dream in five years? What would you like this farm to look like? Okay, now let, let's create that. Beautiful. Let's chunk it down. What will we have to do this year in order to get you to a place where next year and in five years, you're at that place? And that's what Sospolut Pivo is about. We're just teaching people how to, how to not use chemical fertilizers, how to not use chemical pesticides, how to use compost and composting toilets, although in Nicaragua, nobody I know wants to use a composting toilet. Even my staff in our, I don't want to talk about that. So there's, a, there's some resistance. So I need to work with this woman to figure out how to overcome that. Uh, anyway, so Sospolut Pivo is about designing farms that are self-sufficient, where people can produce for their family to eat well, and a surplus they can sell in local markets, and forget the co colonial masters who want you to grow sugar or coffee. Uh, oh, and here we go. Here's some pictures. So for people. So here's a farmer, Don Belo, and uh, this is his traditional milpa, and uh, he doesn't own a tractor, and he's doing this with animal traction, and he's growing corn or tortillas for his family, and when there's extra, he gives it to his cows, and when there's extra of that, he sells it in the market. <clears throat> Each family that we work with gets one visit a month from our agronomy staff, and they, uh, and they do reforestation, they do farm diversification, and they have access to credit. That's what that first thing was about, credit. Okay, okay. the next program we're gonna talk about, it's really about eco-technology. So we have a whole program of credit because we don't want to give things away. Uh, so you have to, people have to want the thing that you have, and then they have to be willing to pay for it. Even if they can't pay what it's worth, you work out a system of incentives so that they get what they need, and they pay something so they maintain their dignity, and you identify, you, you separate who, who really wants this from who's just taking it, because if you go in a community and say, I'm giving stuff out, there'll be a line of people who will take whatever you're giving out. If you come into the community and say, I'm selling, uh, cell phones, people who can benefit from the cell phone will buy the cell phone, and people who can benefit from this technology of the many that we sell uh, will work with you. So anyway, in Nicaragua, people burn wood to cook food, and they don't have chimneys, and this is inside the house, this is the kitchen, and the house fills up with smoke, and the wood is all black, and the women's lungs are black, and the children's lungs are black, and they, the kids get burned, and it's a bad situation, and this is true across the world. A billion people on the planet cook with stoves like this. It's fuel efficient <coughs> and it's a health hazard. So we have, we, we didn't invent this, but we've designed a system that works well in the ground. A very fuel efficient system that uses much less wood, that the heat travels through here and cooks on three burners, 
and then the smoke leaves the house. And let's see. And this is how it works. You create a base. You, you have a, a we, in, uh, this is our design. It's a simple brick model where the, the, the fuel comes in here and the fire travels around like that. And that's the finished product. And it costs about $100 in Nicaragua for us to do that. But a lot of people can't, nobody has $100. No one in the rural area that's cooking like this has $100 to buy something. So we said, okay, we'll <coughs> sell it to you on uh, installment. And so 50 weeks, that's $2 a week. Right? Yeah. Still can't afford that. Okay. Well, if you're willing to plant trees, fuel wood trees in your on your farm, we'll give you a discount. So we're going to donate the trees to you, and we're going to reduce the price of the soaps. Well, I like that idea. So now they're growing. Now they don't have to buy the fuel. They're growing their own fuel, and the still now the stove is costing them a dollar a week. They're paying more than that for their cell phone. And if they don't want it that bad, they probably won't use it anyway. So it's, it really works out. So the credit model has come to inform this, but it's always incentivized and work with the people to do something that they're willing to pay for. Don't give anything away. Uh, this is number three. How many, how's my time? You're fine. Okay. Thank you. OK, so uh, somebody else talked about this, but room, I think, maybe. Um, 25,000 Nicaraguan young people in the last six months have fled the country to work in in uh, Costa Rica. There's no, there aren't jobs right now in Nicaragua, and uh, and so people are going for their jobs. And and if they're not leaving the country, they're leaving the rural areas to live in the cities because that's where jobs are. And we said, this this can't, we can't continue like this. So we have to create a situation where people want to stay in their communities. If you're working in rural areas, you're, you have to, it doesn't matter whether you're in India or you're in Bangladesh, it's the same thing. People are migrating towards the cities where opportunities are. So our strategy is create opportunities where people are. And, the, and so we have this program called Young Entrepreneurs. Every six months, 20 uh, people apply, and we accept 25, 24, 26 people, half from a rural area, half from an urban area, so we get that mix half women, half men, and we say, and the interview process is, what is your, uh, what, what's your entrepreneurial idea? What is your dream job? What's the thing that you can create if you have resources like education and credit or access to capital? And so a person will say, well, my family has a gigantic mango tree and every year it produces so much mango and it just rots on the ground because we can't possibly, we're sick of mangoes by the end of the mango season. But I can make a mango jam and I want to, so I, I want to make jams, but I don't really know how to make jams. Or maybe I do know how to make jams, but I'm not good at accounting. So we get them in this process for 12 weeks. They come in every week and they get trained in business development, in uh, accounting, in uh, marketing, in advertising, and by the end of the 12 weeks, then we have a fair, a presentation where the, uh, the graduates get their idea, and there's a panel, a jury, and we decide this idea really has potential. This one has legs. This one's going to work. And so a third of the people get access to credit, and we fund this startup. It's a, it's a an, uh, what's the, uh, we're, we're angel investors for these people and uh, it's and the kids stay home that's the point this town this is a town of Nairobi it's a rural town in Nicaragua and little businesses are popping up where people are making they're baking breads and uh, they're making tortillas and they're selling backpacks and they're making school uniforms and they're making uh, jams and it, it's a it's a great economic boost and, and it doesn't cost any money it's revolving because the money comes back to us we lend it out that pays back so We've started a program where uh, every school that signs up, we, we say, we're going to help you uh, grow food. And they say, why do we need that? So, well, because it turns out that this guy Pinko that you're eating three times a day, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's a complete protein. Rice and beans, it's a legume, and it's a grain, it's a complete protein. But it's not a complete food because it doesn't have all the vitamins and minerals that you need. And that's why you've got malnutrition in your country because everybody's eating Diet Pinto and then just drinking Coca-Cola. 
And so what we need to do is we need to learn about nutrition and learn what makes a complete diet. And then we need to learn about gardening. And then we need to start producing this ourselves because you can't afford, part, part of the reason you're not eating tomatoes, you can't afford to buy tomatoes. But if you were growing them, there you go. So we take, uh, we, right now we work with six schools every year and they get a fence-in area and our agronomy staff is working with the adults that happen to be these kids' parents. Um, and then the grown-ups come in and they help break the ground and put the fence posts in the hard stuff. And then it's up to the kids to grow the garden. And every school gets, they, they get an improved pump, an improved well, they get a drip irrigation system, and, uh, and then they learn how to, how to germinate seeds and uh, uh, plant their own garden, and then they harvest, and then they work with their teachers to cook and eat their food at school for lunch at the end of the class. Am I done? Nope.